So we have a bunch of different types of titration curves that might occur. The one I just kind of sketched for you, if you plotted it in Excel or Google Sheets, is going to look something like this. Um, you should be able to label the midpoints and the equivalence points. All right, there's only one of each of those in this titration because this is a monoprotic acid, meaning it has one hydrogen to lose. So it'd be something like acetic acid. Over here is something with two protons to lose. So we end up with two equivalence points, actually. So the first one is the dotted line here. All right. And each of those have their own midpoint. So I got these graphs off the internet. I don't know what they are, but ascorbic acid is um, a diprotic acid. So it might be that. There's a lot of diprotic acids, but that's one of them. Remember, that's vitamin C, so it's delicious. Um, the formula, oh, that six should be a subscript. It's just all sixes, which makes it fun. <laughs> Um, actually, I, I like to put the H where, uh, where it's actually connected, so hold on. These H's are not acidic. It's just the two in front. Okay, so that's ascorbic acid. If this were ascorbic acid, you would be starting out with the... I'm defining my... No, I don't want to keep writing C6H6O6, so A is C6H6O6. So we're going to start out with this acid in the beginning and then slowly convert it until it, it is in the form of the first conjugate. So that's what you would have here. Um, then continue to add base until we end up with just A2 minus. So that would be C6, H6, O6, 2 minus. Um, and that's what you have there dictating the pH. Now, whenever we have this in solution, it's going to go backwards and form a little bit of its conjugate, but that's okay. You can use ice tables and KAs to figure it out. Your starting point is the, is the, the primary species that exists at that point of the titration curve. So now at the midpoints, we're going to do the midpoints in green. The midpoints are halfway, right? So halfway between these two points, not, you know, like, okay, so let's say this is 40 milliliters. That means this will happen at 20 milliliters. It's halfway through the entire titration. That's not a midpoint, that's an equivalence point because you have completely reacted all of your starting material. So halfway between equivalence point one and equivalence point two is our midpoint two. Halfway from the beginning to the first equivalence point is midpoint one. All right, so these are two different Ka's, right? So this Ka will be Ka2 pKa2, and this will be pKa1. Our volumes, of course, would be, well, so 20, half of that is 10. To get to this one, what I usually do is the total titration volume times 75%, or three quarters, because you're three quarters of the way through the titration. So the answer there, of course, is going to be 30 in this case, but in real life, you're not going to get exactly 40 mils, so it, it's good to know this. Okay, so that's a diprotic. Diprotic means two protons, and I can tell because there's two bumps. Now, in reality, this isn't as clear as this, um, so actually chemists use, we use derivatives to do this, really. Um, we're not going to do that in this class but it makes it a lot easier to see where this change occurs because on a derivative, it's just going to be like one big peak. All right. This titration is starting out at a high pH and going down to a low pH. So this is a weak base being titrated by a strong acid. So that's another possible type of titration. So as I mentioned already, the buffer zone is where the pH is not changing dramatically. So we have two if there is diprotic, or in this case, is carbonate, so it has two places where it absorbs protons, but that's one happening here, from here to here, and the other one happening from here to here. 
So we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation anywhere the pH is not dramatically changing, but in the middle part and where the equilibrium points are, we actually can't. You have to do an ice table and work it out for the given moles of each thing in the, in the mixture, each the base and the acid that you're adding in this case. Um, same thing down here, okay? The pH down here, so if we just, again, I always find that writing the reactions helps to simplify things. So what's happening is in the beginning, you have CO3 two minus and you're adding H plus to it. So you're gonna get bicarbonate and then you're gonna add H plus to that in your second part of the curve. And then at the end, you end up with, whoops, you end up with carbonic acid. So here, this is carbonic acid. And so you can use uh, chapter 16 to figure out how to write an equation for that and figure out the H plus and figure out the pH. Um, at the beginning, you can do the same thing, but it's going to be a, a KB there because it's CO3 two minus. Here, things get funky. Okay, things get really weird in the middle because you have, you have this present and this is amphiprotic. Remember, that means it can go as, it can react as a base like we've drawn here. Or the pH can be dictated by, by it reacting like an acid. Oh, that's supposed to be one minus. Um, so if it reacted like an acid, then it would be doing this. So going kind of backwards up the curve, right? So both of these things are possible. Just like we practiced in the worksheet at the end of chapter 16, the only way to tell is to compare, oh, that would be a KB, sorry, and the KA. And the only way to identify the right ones to pick is by looking at the appendix and writing out all the reactions and choosing the right case. So we have the skills to, to calculate the pH at any point in a titration curve, as long as we know the concentration of the initial acid or, and the concentration of the base. And or, actually, if you just have the concentration of the base and the volume of the acid, you can figure out concentration of acid. That's chapter 4.6. So that's where I told you guys to go review that. So if you haven't, now's the time. <laughs> All right. So if we're before the equivalence point and we're doing a strong acid, strong base, you simply subtract the number of moles from what you start with minus how much base you have added. That's how much has reacted. And you want to make sure that you're accounting for the fact that the volume has changed. So you have a certain volume of acid and you're adding base as you go along. So you want to, you want to add the total volume together. Each part of the calculation needs that done for the pH to be accurate. Um, if you're at the equivalence point, the pH of the conjugate is what matters. So you're going to do an ice table. You're going to use the K from the appendix to do that. Um, oh, I forgot to say before the equivalence point. No, this is strong acid. Never mind. When you're at the equivalence point or after the equivalence point, so that's in this region, you just need to figure out how much extra base is there. So you would take uh, moles of base, subtract the moles of an acid that was in there to begin with, and that's going to be excess base. That's what's dictating the pH. And that's why it's kind of flattening out because the base has a limitation to how high the pH can go. Each base does. So here's an example problem. So we have a 0.1 molar NaOH solution and we are adding it to 0.1 molar HCl. These are both strong. And in theory, if we have 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl, it should require 25 milliliters to get to the equivalence point. Um, so we're doing one before and one immediately after that point. So. As always, we need a reaction, just to make sure it's a one-to-one -one reaction, of course. So there we are. And then I'm gonna figure out the moles, right? So we have moles of, of, of acid because you have 
molarity in milliliters. You can also work in millimolar if you're comfortable with that. I don't, I don't mind. If not, you're going to have to convert to milliliters and liters like this. Uh, this is moles per liter, of course. So, it's 2.5 millimolar or 0 0.0. 0.025 moles of HCl. And of course, we know that's going to react in a one-to-one -one situation because we wrote the reaction. All right. So that would be like a normal situation that we're starting with um, at the equivalence point, right? However, if we're at 0.24, sorry, if we're at 24 milliliters added, we're not quite there yet. So You've got to figure out the moles that you've actually reacted with. You can do it this way too, it doesn't matter. Make sure to keep your zeros though. In your real titration, you'll have two decimal places there. So you end up with 0 0.0024 moles of the NaOH. So to figure out the pH, what I have to do is just subtract these two values. And so of course, then I'm going to plug that into the, the pH equation. It's going to be, it's going to be higher because we added some base than it would have been at the beginning. So we get a pH of four and remember two decimal places. Um, so then you can do the same thing for excess base. In that case, it's going to be a POH. It's going to be the same excess, but it'll be NaOH. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. Oh, I wonder if anyone's going to catch it. Should I tell you or should I let you get points for figuring it out? I guess I'll tell you. The problem is that I forgot to account for the volume. This is just moles, right? And so when we did this calculation, it was not correct because it, it doesn't account for the fact that I have changed the volume. So, right, we have this many moles of HCl that are left. Do you know what caught me? Let me tell you what I was thinking um, because it helps you to, to catch the same kind of error later. I was thinking that if I plugged in the same number, I'm going to get a POH that's the same as the pH, and that, that doesn't make sense. I know that because the volume is changing, the, these values are not the same. So that's what caught me, <clears throat> a little bit of logic in the back of my head. So what we're going to do for the volume is we're starting out with this much acid in liters, and we're adding this much base. And so, you know, that's addition, so you got to do that first. So we end up with a molarity of 0 0.00204. Now we're ready to plug that in here. That's really different than 0 0.001 moles, right? And our actual answer is 2.69. Same situation here. It's the right number of moles, but now we have 20, well, so 0 0.025 liters of acid and 0 0.026 liters of base, right? So the concentration is 0 0.00196. It gets more diluted as you go along in the titration because you're, you're adding more volume. And so then I can calculate a POH, and it's a POH because that's NaOH, not H plus, right? So make sure not to get tripped up by that too. So we get 2.71, 
And so, of course, to get the pH, I have to take that and go 14 minus 2.71. Um, defining what you're calculating is a very, very good way of not seeing the 2.71 and being like, oh, I'm done, right? So right before the equivalence point, our pH is 2.69. After the equivalence point, it's 11.29. It's a huge difference. That's because it's a strong acid and a strong base. The pH at the equivalence point is actually 7 because you will have had no excess of anything and no conjugate that, that reacts with water. 